So 50 rates, I've tracked pretty much all the points as precisely as possible. I concluded with 1.57 million points. So a little bit more than, you know, 30k points average. There's a few deaths in there, so... This is going to be problematic, unless I can kill it right now. Oof. Thank god for the rune crossbow accuracy sometimes. I've been trying to get the bombless bucket for my farming necessities. And chrono seeds are amazing for that. So if you're a big into planting a lot of trees, special trees that take a long time to grow, like for example his spore, then the chronos is amazing because it can skip some of the stages. No, I cannot get him on time. Yes, I'm hitting though. Holy shit, I'm going hard right now. There we go. That's the RNG I'm talking about. No, this is not the RNG. This is the power of Augury. This is the power of the mighty Augury. That's what it is. That was amazing, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, that Augury is coming in, boys. Oh shit. Please. Oh my freaking god. No! Yes! Oh my god, that was so close. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, dang it, man. That's unfair, dude. That's not even fair, bro. I was hoping I would get heal. I have a 25% chance for it to run me over. So here is a good tip on recovering from a Fossa death. So by the time you go all the way back to Fossa, the timer for 40 seconds in which he'll stay at the crystal before he teleports you again will probably have almost expired. So there's no way for you to really finish off the crystal and prevent him from teleporting you. So expect a teleport. But the thing is you can completely avoid the teleport. So here's what I do. If I come back on time and he's still at the crystal, then I simply just wait. I don't even bother going for the crystal. I wait for him to get off the crystal. And when I see him start moving to the center, I get a few hits in and then I leave the room. So the reason why I do that is because I'm trying to avoid the teleport portion just because you'll save yourself a lot of HP avoiding it. So I come back in when I know the teleport's about to happen or is happening and then I go back in and start repeating Fossa as if nothing happened. This way I preserve the most amount of food and deal the most amount of damage. Thank God Preserve exists and I have it. Alright, Mahogany Eagle, check. There we go, awesome. House teleports are so convenient just because I can use redirection scrolls and yeah, just teleport anywhere that there's a house. So right now my house is at Yanel and I want to be able to go around to different house spots like Bremiven for like farming purposes. I'm also going to need these for the Trollheim teleports when I do go back to doing some God Wars for future upgrades. Oh shit, 60 Hunter. Ooh, what is this? Molted eel and Mulk Island 73 fishing. Uh, not not sure what I can do right now. Besides, to safe spot them right now. Okay, let me see what I can do here. Let me see if I can safe spot them. Yes, I did. Feels good, man. Get right, shamans. Just gotta go with the flow, man. Just gotta go with the flow. Oh shit. I'm dead. No, Overload killed me. God damn it, man. I was hoping Redemption would save me, but oh well. Holy shit, dude. So, nine more raids to go, and I can get my first phase two upgrade. And uh, earlier, I said that we're gonna go with the Zenite necklace. Here's a spreadsheet I wanna show you guys right now. So this spreadsheet is amazing. You're going to be able to find this in the description, by the way. So this spreadsheet is made by my friend Chaos. That's his online name. But credit to him, of course. But this calculator that he made is amazing. He did some wizardry on this baby. But this calculator can calculate exactly how many giant seaweed you need and how many buckets of sand you need. So it's amazing. You have different options here. Here is my numbers. I'm trying to get 287, of course, from 85 crafting, as you can see here. So according to the calculator, from 85 to 87, doing the 3 to 18 ratio for seaweeded sand and creating unpowered orbs. But anyways, that's going to come out to 1.2k giant seaweed 
and 7,200 buckets of sand. So let's look back at my bank and let me show you what I got. So what do I got? Giant seaweed, almost there. Buckets of sand, luckily I've been doing a lot of this AFKing when I was editing videos, so I'm good on that. The fuck? I just got 20 more glass on the ground. What? Jesus Christ. 86 crafting though. 1850 total. Okay, one more to go for the boost. Honestly. Oh hell yeah, this this raid looks really good. Yeah, it has it has a lot of good potential here. Uh pretty blitz raid, pretty fast. Probably have to do a little bit of prepping here, but I do have seeds here. This raid layout is insanely unique. It's really fast, prep or not, and also for me, I have a really good chance to no prep this raid. There is an agility room. However, this agility room is right before FASA. It's super ideal to have agility room right before FASA because FASA special ability in the beginning will always max out whatever HP you have minus five, right? So normally if you do agility room, you take a lot of damage and after agility room is done, you gotta refill your HP back up to like full. However, if I have this before FASA, I don't even have to bother brewing up after the agility room is done because FASA is just gonna milk away all my HP anyway, so it's pointless. So this way, I can do the agility room and use about half as less food as I normally would. And that means I can preserve that food and carry it onto all. Recently, Jagus made the update where your weapons will remember which attack style it was on, even if you switch weapons. So this comes in really handy for uh, raids, especially because when I'm switching from Blowpipe Crossbow to the Hosta, the Hosta usually defaults to Slash, which isn't what I want. I want to be on stat, but now the Hosta just remembers, so... I'm on other things, this just applies just about, you know, anywhere PVM related, really. First run of the day. What's my KC at right now, by the way? No purple, but ooh, another sub-30 rate, really? Which lady sells... Oh, hell yeah, man. Dude, buying seeds from uh, the farming guild shop is pr pretty good. L let me see what the non-skill total world's got, though. wonder if that's bought out. It's not. Hell yeah, man. That's pretty good. No competition. I'll take that. Woohoo, baby. Will be both spec back to back. Let's get it. What the hell? Again. Three in a row. Holy shit. That was insane. Step aside, Tebo. We have a new challenger. Here's a really important tip for those of you guys that are trying to learn how to lure skeletons but not exactly sure how to minimize the damage while doing so. So my number one tip is put on your best magic defensive gear and make sure you have your trident on or your synchronicity staff. So that way you have the best magic defense possible. Your staff actually gives you a lot of magic defense. It's like at least 20 plus. And while you are getting close to the melee distance, you'll be able to tank those hits. And if you want to, you can also attack the skeleton mages with your trident on the way, which is why I do. It's actually quite effective because Void doesn't have any negative magic bonuses, so it hits fairly okay, as you can see. And I want to showcase just how awesome having Augury is, because I can actually hit the skeleton mages fairly decently with Augury. On top of the insane 25% magic defensive boost, which helps negate some of their damage, I also get that 25% magic accuracy which combined with my trident absolutely smashes them while I'm luring. Although, once they are safely trapped, you should definitely switch back to range. There we go. That was a pretty good raid though. No purple. But 75 raids. Oh man, there we go, man. The first item upgrade outside of raids rewards, man. Finally have that box ready to go. Don't have a Zenite. Haven't done MM2 yet, but uh, after today, though, I'm definitely going to be working on that. We already know the first upgrade is going to be the Zenite necklace, but now we have to worry about what's after the next 75. So at 150 KC, I was thinking I shouldn't really get anything that would just take off my void just yet because I need to save inventory space. So I think I want to go for the Primordial Boots just because it'll, it'll be a straight upgrade from... Dragon Boots, so let's go with that. Primordial Boots. 
Now I can make serotonin brews without boosting. That's honestly something I've been I've been looking forward to for a while here. I need to make some brews soon, anyways. I, I'm almost out. Only got a few more raids left in me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally gotten ourselves the cheeky 87 crafting right on the money here. So that's it. All I gotta do is boost and I can make a Zenite necklace, aka anguish. Now, I don't have Zenite, so you know what I gotta do? I gotta slay some demonic gorillas after Monkey Madness 2. So let's get it done. Oh, only one try, yes. Okay, alright, so it's time to do some Monkey Madness 2. I now have all the requirements. Alright, time for the hard part. Pretty good gear though. And I'm only risking really a glory and a rune pickaxe. Because everything else is untradeable, so I'll just keep it in my uh, inventory if I die here, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna do the tanking method. I got a lot of defense and a lot of food, so. I'm so confused. <laughs> Where the fuck am I supposed to go? This is not working, man. So, while I was doing the tanking method, um, there are multiple paths that you, you know, take, and if it's a wrong one, you just go back and try the other one, right? But I got to a point where I went to the wrong one, but it won't let me go back. I've tried everything. There's only so many things you can click on in this small area. And no matter what, it just won't let me go back. Because the stupid spinning plate just keeps pushing you out and there doesn't seem to be a way to disable it. So, fuck it. You know, if I miss something, whatever, I'm just gonna teleport out and try again. Round 2! Alright, so we went this way and it didn't work, so it's gotta be this way, right? <laughs> like, it has to be this way. <laughs> Alright, cool. That means if I fail this part, it doesn't really matter, because I can come back. Alright. Ah, crap. This guy hit so hard. Yikes. I'm just gonna flinch him. Last time I just face tanked him, but this time I don't really have a lot of food because I, I did the quicker method. There we go. That was easy. Kill. Take the remains of Monkey Boy. Give me that. Alright. Nope. Hot words. Ooh. I don't know what the fuck I did, but that shit works. <laughs> so as far as I know, you have placed explosives at enough locations, you just head back to the boat. Steve? Nani? Uh, hello? S that's not Steve. I suppose... I hope they don't kill it. How many more hits do I need, man? Just how many more hits does this guy need? 15? Come on, one more hit. Okay, now I'll start hitting a little bit. There we go. Alright, there we go. Monkey Madness 2 completed. Access to Crash Site Caverns. Beautiful. Finally, we can try our luck at some demonic gorillas. And get this Zenite Shard. I guess this is gonna be my setup. Pretty straightforward. A hybrid setup between uh, range and melee. Now I can finally put decent use to the Carol's top, you know. I was gonna plan on using it a lot for Zami, but that obviously didn't happen. So we use it a lot at the amount of gorillas. Not gonna bother looking for a task, just wanna get my first Zenite done quickly. Alright, let's get out of here. 30 kills, not bad. I gotta refine my inventory a bit, and uh, yeah. 30 kills, 756k, god damn, the amount of alcohols, man, here. That's insane. But yeah, I'll be making a lot of GP uh, for construction training in the future, and uh, some good herbs and seeds. While well, I'm looking for the Zenite shard, so that's honestly, even if you go dry here, you're still benefiting a ton, so looking forward to getting some more non Zenite loops. Alright, it's pretty good. Second trip, I did 63 kills. Goodness, damn, dude. This setup is actually really fine, honestly. Just making some food for some demonic gorillas, managed to get myself 90 cooking. Not too shabby. 69 hunter, cool. Alright, um, I'm really hoping uh, these hunter levels, you know, will start giving me some more bird's nest. I mean, it's probably a shit ton of inflation, but you know, still nice. Oh, okay. Oh, yo! I got the Zenite! 
Yes! Oh my god, dude. Lucky. Actually, actually was lucky, dude. Yes! Okay, only took me like 220 kills. Yeah, I did 80 kills yesterday, 140, 100, 100 something kills today. Okay. Holy shit, dude. That's, that's the RNG, boys. I have 70,000 Chaos Runes. Thanks, Or, for that. So it's time to go and, uh, sell some Chaos Runes and get myself an Onyx to make this beautiful Anguish ornament kit. Mm. Plus five, yes! Holy shit, on the last one, too. Oh my god. Made that shit in a heartbeat, dude. Holy crap. There we go. Nice, send a necklace. Yes! Let's get that, man. Hell yeah, brothers. Oh boy. Alright, cosmics. Oh, luckily I have a few cosmics lying around. Yes! Oh, that's so nice. Alright, boys. This setup looks pretty much the same as the one that I've been using since Zero KC raids, but... I ditched the Guthix Dehy Boots for the Necklace of Anguish because accuracy wise they're about the same. However, the Anguish also has 5 range strength with the Necklace of Anguish. Huge, by the way. That's easily 1 extra damage. Physical damage with like the Rune Crossbow and probably the Blowpipe, so. So yeah, it's, it's a big upgrade from a Guthix Dehy Boots. I would love to bring the boots, but unfortunately my gear and stuff is not good enough to bring. To risk another switch, so. Damn, dude. Oh my god. A anguish bonus hits are insane. Holy fuck, man. That one extra damage makes so much difference. Holy hell. Oh, wow. That was insane. That was a little bit too concerning there. That blowpipe 45. Holy shit. Not sure what I can do right now, though. I think I can just blowpipe, honestly. There we go. Damn, okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to wrap up today's video here. I think we got a small amount of progress here. Got our first upgrade of the 19 non-raids rewards upgrades completed. So I'm very happy with that. So if you are new to the series, the information for the series rules and all that, you can find that in the description of the video. So make sure to check that out. Also, subscribe to the series if you want to receive the latest updates on videos for the series. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon with another progress video in a few days. Bye bye.